I'm Joe Garcia, DevOps Security Engineer with CyberArk. Today we're going to be talking about the future of automation with Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform in CyberArk. But first, let me just dive into what CyberArk brings to the table as far as integrations are concerned with Red Hat Ansible. Just to give a quick overview of what our Application Access Manager is, for those of you who may not know, our Application Access Manager is just one small slice of a, of a larger portfolio of products that we have in our Privileged Access Security solution. Application Access Manager itself focuses more on the secrets management for applications, for automation tools, for containers, DevOps, all of these very, very uh, non-human types of tasks that need to be performed in enterprises today. So we're not dealing with anything human-based. There's not going to be any, you know, Active Directory users that are human-related being dealt with here. This is specifically for non-human users to be able to fetch secrets. And it secures DevOps tools from platforms as a service, such as Kubernetes OpenShift, uh, you know, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, which is now Tanzu. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is simplify how developers secure their code by providing them with easy ways of being able to retrieve credentials in a secure manner without actually having any secret zero in place. We also leverage our C-Cubed Alliance, uh, which is a group of partners in our ecosystem that we have great partnerships with and create great integrations with, such as we did with Red Hat, which is one of many in our C-Cubed Alliance. So we have these integrations in place for commercial off-the-shelf applications, for your robotic process automation, as well as third-party tools that exist out there. Uh, we can deliver secrets to these applications in a very integrated manner. And when we can, we try to use native authentications. And what I mean by that is we try to utilize the platform itself and the attributes contained within to establish trust rather than floating around a token or some other sort of secret zero in order to make that uh, trust established for us. If we can verify that the attributes are what we're seeing in our policy as code, then we'll go ahead and we'll trust it. Um, and ob obviously there's multiple levels to that and we can get into that another time. But at the end of the day, I think it's important to note that while all of this DevOps and containers talk and these ephemeral identities that Application Access Manager deals really good with, it can also handle on-premise static environments where you know, these, there's long-lived accounts, of even all the way down to the mainframe level. So we can go really mainframe to cloud with supplying credentials across the board. We're not subjected to one or the other. So very, very cool stuff. That's our application access manager. Uh, today, what we're going to be looking at as far as a use case is concerned is we're gonna be working in Red Hat Ansible Tower, and we're gonna be working with two products out of our application access manager suite. That is our central credential provider and our dynamic access provider. Our central credential provider is a more static host that has a web service exposed that applications can communicate with over an API in order to retrieve their credentials, so long as the authentication is sound. Uh, and our dynamic access provider is more scalable since it's a container ar architecture um, in a clustered environment uh, and is very, very scalable, works well with Red Hat OpenShift as well as a bunch of other platforms too. Uh, so you can start to see the differences here between our central credential provider, which sits in IIS, dynamic access provider that's containerized. Both of these are available out of the box as integrations as part of Red Hat Ansible Tower's secret management system. So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. In the center there is just a depiction of our enterprise password vault, where we store secrets encrypted, as well as manage them, and, and they will stay there until they're retrieved and we can audit where it's going. So some common credential types that you might keep in Ansible Tower today are things such as your machine credentials, your usernames and passwords to log into servers, your SSH keys, uh, things like that. Amazon Web Services holds your access keys for your AWS environments. GitHub Personal Access Tokens are a big one. It's not a, the same as a username and password for GitHub. The personal access token 
allows you to your automation to bypass MFA if they use that token. So it's basically the same as a username password plus your MFA, since automation can't make a prediction as to what the token code would be. And then finally, I threw Google Compute Engine in there as another example of a common credential you might store in Ansible Tower. But today, we're not going to store them in Ansible Tower anymore. We're going to move those down and into our Enterprise Password Vault so that now the Enterprise Password Vault can manage the compliance, rotate those passwords on time, and make sure that all of these accounts and, and secrets are being uh, held to security standards within the organization. What we put in place of those credentials, however, is a secret lookup credential. And this is essentially a broker to connecting to either our central credential provider or our dynamic access provider. And so it's going to hold that connection information in order to know where to you know, send the requests to, right? It needs an endpoint. Uh, know the authentication information that it needs, whether that is uh, you know, just the IP address or a client certificate of some kind, all of that can be configured in here. And then Ansible Tower, when a job kicks off and it needs a credential, will use that secret lookup credential in order to communicate out to either the central credential provider or the dynamic access provider, depending on which you have configured uh, and, and set as your lookup for that particular secret. These will both then, depending on who you communicate with, reach out to our vault as long as everything checks out from an authentication perspective and retrieve that credential information and then shoot it right back up to Red Hat Ansible Tower so it can be used in your job. So this is a very high level way of how this is going to work out today, but let's take a second, let's flip over to the demo environment and I'll show you what it looks like and how you can configure it in a very short time. Uh, Ansible Tower's login page here for me in my lab. I'm going to go ahead and log in as admin just so that we can do a tour of what we've got configured here. So when we log in, we'll see, you know, typical dashboard and everything like that. What I want to do though is go to credentials and show you what credentials I have configured. And you'll notice that these Amazon Web Services kind of, of credentials are, are typical, but there's two that you may have not seen before. And that would be your CyberArk AIM central credential provider lookup and the CyberArk Conjure secret lookup. Conjure is our open source solution. Uh, Dynamic access provider is our enterprise solution. Uh, so you'll choose Conjure to work with either or. In this instance, to set these up, it's fairly simple. You'll click the green button up here and be able to select your credential type where you'll see them listed right there and you can select them and set them up. But since I already have some set up, let's just dive into our central credential provider one, which is configured to be used by Ops Team One. And if we click here, we can see we have some details that we do need to fill out. Uh, they are encrypted because they already have information in there. Uh, we do need to know the URL for where the AIM web service is going to be hit. Um, we also need the application ID as well, which is set up through CyberArk Solution, as well as a client key and client certificate if you're going to be using uh, CyberArk's client certificate authentication uh, in order to uh, have an, an additional layer of authentication in place. So with all of this, it, it's the information that Ansible Tower needs in order to make a connection back to our central credential provider and start making requests for secrets on demand. As far as Conjure or our dynamic access provider is concerned, this secret lookup has been uh, configured for Ops Team 2. So only Ops Team 2 will be able to get this. And as you can see, we have a couple different uh, bits of information that we need. Uh, definitely the Conjure URL for where the Conjure service sits, uh, but also the API key, which is a host identity that's assigned to my Ansible tower the account that was created when I installed and configured Conjure, as well as the host's username here, which is denoted by host forward slash, and then the name that I assigned to it via policy. Whoops! Let me just revert that there. That's my bad.
Uh, and then if you happen to be running a, a self-signed certificate instead of having a valid uh, SSL in place, uh, you can provide the public key certificate so that we can establish that trust and not have to worry about any insecure um, warnings or anything like that. Uh, but both of these, though, have the ability to test, so you can click the blue test button and give a secret identifier. Uh, I don't have one offhand to provide this test, but if, it, if you run it, it will come back either a green toast badge in the upper right hand corner if it was successful otherwise it'll be red and it'll give you a failure message error code and some description as to what happened there as far as how you set this up that's just one step to everything there's a lot of misconceptions that that's all you need to do to start being able to use this however it's not you need to still have uh, some sort of identity in the, uh, for, for the credential you want to retrieve in here. So that's why I have these Amazon Web Services credentials set up. If we take out the one that Ops Team 1 will be using, you can see that it looks like the normal Amazon Web Services credential type that we're setting up. I have my access key put in there, uh, but there's a little bit of a difference here in my secret key. It's just a batch and it tells me the lookup uh, name that's being used in order to feed this value in. You set this by clicking the magnifying glass, choosing your credential secret lookup here, and then in the metadata Whoops, in the metadata uh, section, you give the information. So for instance, I have a safe in CyberArk called DAWS Access Keys, and I'm gonna be pulling the one that has the username set to Tower Ops Team 1. I can provide a reason, but it's optional. It's not always necessary. And I can also test this too. So now you can see that green toast notification that the test passed. If I were to back off and mess it up somehow, now we see we get an error and it's red. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Actually, I could just cancel out. So this is going to be the access key that we use in order to provision some uh, EC2 instances in my AWS lab. And then if we go back to the credentials, this key here for Ops Team 2 that's coming from Conjure will be used in order to deprovision these instances. So if we take a look at our job template here, and we just inspect this uh, rel8 provision ec2 one we'll see that i have linked the ops team one credential uh, for this provision task and then for the deprovision task i have linked the ops team well i guess I, I i have to do it between ubuntu or something like that huh so that would be ops team two there so um, let me go ahead and i'll just change this one out to ops team two instead of ops team one get rid of that and we'll go up to amazon web services add ops team two select it and we're good so we'll go ahead and save that and so let's kick these off real quick and then what will happen is they, these secrets that don't exist in ansible tower today will get pulled from our enterprise password vault just in time using first the central credential provider and second conjure it won't look any different to you and to your administrators though they don't have to worry about really changing those credentials uh, every 90 days or so when things are rotated to keep in compliance so we can click the rocket here for provisioning our ec2 instance and so this is basically going to take a look at the secret lookup get the connection information, reach out to our central credential provider with that information. Then the central credential provider will pull the secret from the vault, send it back to Ansible Tower, kick off our playbook, log into AWS, and now start our rel AWS EC2 instance. So that's changed. That's a good thing. We've changed the state of that EC2 instance, and it is now online in AWS, and we have a successful status up here. Now, to just reverse that whole flow, we'll be taking the secret from within, uh, from through Conjure. So it's the same workflow, but we're going through Conjure, dynamic access provider, in order to get the secret um, and then deprovisioning that uh, rel8 EC2 instance that we just spun up. And so everything will look the same again. Uh, and, and we have Ops Team 2 here. So I can have Ops Team 2 with access to this, Ops Team 1 with access to the one we just did. And that way I can start to segregate my duties, not only in CyberArk, but now also in Ansible Tower. My two ops teams don't have access to secrets that they shouldn't have access to anymore.
And so here we changed it by terminating it and we're good to go. We have completely cleared out that rel8 EC2 instance. And now I can go into CyberArk. I can make changes to that access key information. I can rotate it. Uh, I can do whatever I want. And this automation will still kick off any time that my admin, my ops teams come in and click that little rocket. That's the beauty of this integration. Well, there you have it. I just showed you how CyberArk can integrate with Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform and really let us handle the security while Ansible automates at scale uninterrupted. Let's do what we both do best. Secure your secrets used by Red Hat Ansible Tower in CyberArk Secure Digital Vault, our enterprise password vault. This allows these passwords, these private keys, access keys, tokens, everything that Ansible needs in order to function its automation tasks to be automatically rotated now. They're not laying static or having to be touched by a tower admin or an Ansible admin in order to be changed every so often. And you can rest assured, Ansible Tower will always receive the most current secret just in time. This way, any automation tasks being done through Ansible are uninterrupted and your secrets are still kept within compliance. So you're making those auditors happy and keeping them off your back. But at the end of the day, let CyberArk's platform handle the secret management so that you can take off your multiple hats of security operations, this and that, and just put your red hat on while you focus on successful automation in Red Hat's Ansible automation platform. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching this video today. Please be sure to scan the QR code on your screen to get more information about how CyberArk and Red Hat play nice together or feel free to visit the links that you see on the sidebar for more information specifically on Red Hat. Thank you, and until next time, have a great day.